All right, so back for the last half hour of All Things Employment on OneTalkNetwork.com with me, your host, Aaron Boyce, and me, Robin Rosina, with Chanel Sadler. And that's our crew. We got a crew. I'm so excited because uh, now I get to do the Think About It. And, and, and I'm going to do it with. with, with a plum and verb. Think about it. No, stop, please. No, no. That Why don't we good. just do it the regular way? That, because that was good. No, See? no, that's no. that's not good. We could make that the regular way. No, no we, we can't. will not. Oh, we we will not no. make that the regular way. Okay, I, I I do love you with like an inch of my heart, but yes. not that much. Think about okay. it. I won't. We're gonna think. We are gonna think about it. Okay. We're actually hoping for the answer for the think about. Okay. It. Well, first, the question. All right. What do these three things have in common? Money, a hammer, and a fork. And, and Chanel goes, "Ooh, I got it! I got it!" So we're gonna let Chanel answer that question. And the answer is. Well, just for the record, I don't talk like that. That's Aaron trying to imitate me. It, it. it doesn't. No, no. That doesn't exactly work. Ever. She, she, she's stalling. No, I, no, I think she has a good answer. Okay, so the answer, well, that I think, um, the three you said money, a hammer, and fork, right? I did. Okay, well, in order to get any of those, you have to work. In, in, in order to get any of them, you have to work. Mm -hmm. I know the answer. Okay, okay, that that was a that was a very good try. It was good. And, and, and mind you, they may not be, that may not be a wrong answer, it just wasn't my answer. Your answer. Okay. It just but wasn't see, you the right you answer. You have voices inside <laughs> your head, so, so there's no telling okay. what the real answer but, but Robert has the answer. I have the answer. Okay. So, go. money, a hammer, and a fork all have in common the fact that they are tools. Ding, 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 <laughs> Imagine this. Imagine that you have a picture that you want to put on the wall, and you have a nail, but you have no hammer. You have a party that's about to start. It, My it, shoe. It, 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 thank you. Thank you. You use your shoe, or a book, or Chanel's sh head. Either way, uh, it sounds either, dangerous. No. Either way, or some, something hard. Ah, uh, I'm going to step out and so. go to shackles, <laughs> and then we're going to ask um, Larry to come back with a welder, oh. so I can just weld the keys. Got it. Now, you know. what if you had a steaming plate of spaghetti, and you were real you. hungry, but no fork? It, is it possible for us to get off on the food level? Because... It is lunchtime. My point, though, <laughs> is that the fork <laughs> is a tool that you would use to eat that spaghetti. But if you Absolutely. didn't have the fork, w would you starve? Absolutely not. That's what fingers are for. Yeah, the fingers are for, right? So the same thing with mm -hmm. money. Too often, I hear, I can't do this because I don't have the, the money. But I want you to think about this. Money is simply a tool, like the hammer and like the, the, the fork. If you, have, if you don't have that tool, you still make things happen. Now, it may be more difficult, but it is doable. And remember, when I talk about money, I'm talking about money in your pocket. That's what I'm talking about, money in your pocket. So what can you do, okay, uh, when you don't have money in your pocket? That is for another tutorial. Just understand this. If you think of money as a tool and n nothing more, your life will get better. Because money doesn't control you, you control your money. Absolutely. But in Aaron's case, the voices in his head control him. And that is my think about it for today. And we're going to spend some time thinking about that. What we've got coming up next is our point counterpoint. And Aaron, you raised a good point this week. It's a unique situation that doesn't happen very often. So I wanted just to take a moment and capture that. And I think, and I think that I would love for you to discuss that you can be our point. Really? You can. Why, thank you, Aaron. Point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't write anything on the board, though. 
for what? The think about it? No, but well, yeah. Money is a tool. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We, okay. Okay. we will make sure that he gets on the board, Aaron. Okay. We don't want you to, tr- to, to try to get a pretty low head about the writing on the board. Simply, money is a tool. Okay, that's that's all. Okay. Good job, Chanel. Thanks for, okay. Okay. thanks for helping out the world. I don't know if I should be... Grateful, happy, or, 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 or downright? No, you should be thankful for the rest of your life. Thankful? Okay. Yep. okay. Be grateful okay. that we have relieved you of the responsibility of having okay. to write on the book. We have taken over the scribe duties, and you are no longer burdened with the knowledge that you have to write legibly. Because and, that was really a challenge. And that's how you get out of every uh, uh, question that says, hey, who wants to take notes? <laughs> At every meeting that you ever go to, okay? See, he's joking. No one, no one says me to take notes. So that's no, I, I'm just, I'm trying to save our listeners. I'm trying okay. to save our viewers. I'm trying to save us because decoding yeah. that hieroglyphic mess oh for the gosh. first few weeks was Sometimes terrible. Like, oh, and so now we have point, counter point. Yeah, no, that one is not going to work either. First of all, all of that puffing you were doing, I think you almost put my eye out. So let's. Well, it looks a little swollen. Exactly. Let's avoid trying to add in music. (laughs) We'll just, you know, have to up our our budget and get some real money. Get some real music. But in the meantime, our point counterpoint is brought to us courtesy of um, some happenings in in our um, athletic leagues, uh, professional athletic leagues around the country. And we're going to, to tackle this from, no pun intended, from uh, an employment situation, from an, an employment standpoint. Um, recently, we've had a lot of conversation about um, domestic violence and the repercussions for employees who engage in those activities at their job. And specifically, um, in in the media has been um, Aaron uh, Ray Rice, and then we've also had Adrian Peterson. Um, just uh, recently, we've also been talking about Ray McDonald and um, Hope Solo, who is the goalkeeper for the U.S. women's soccer team. Um, and there are obviously arguments on all sides of this issue. And I want to be clear when I say that there is no excuse for harming someone, whether you're angry, whether they've been aggressive towards you. I I believe that each one of us has responsibility for our own actions, and so we can't blame others for what we did. So that's my position on on the violence. But we're going to talk about it as it pertains to the workplace. So, Aaron? Well... So the question that I have is, should a person's livelihood be compromised because you can't control yourself outside of the workplace? For instance, if you're a Walmart employee and you do an excellent job as a Walmart employee, and then you go home and you go beat up your wife, does that mean you get to lose your job as a Walmart employee? Well, I think that um, we we have a couple issues that have to be uh, discussed. One of those things is legality. So if, in fact, law enforcement officials deem your actions objectionable and against the law or things that they can be you can be charged with, then yes, you will be prevented from going back to your Walmart position because you're going to be spending a little time in the jail. But now, in this country, we have innocent until proven guilty. Now, interesting enough that none of these cases have really come yet to any conclusions. That's true. And yet people are losing money, losing their jobs, uh, uh, being s- suspended. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, how fair is that? Now, understand. I absolutely am against violence. And I think that anyone who hits, well, anyone is an idiot, but anyone who hits somebody, a woman or a child, they need to be put in a rocket ship to the moon and stay there. Say that, say that. I have 
no personal problem with these people being put on suspension. Mm -hmm. I got no problem with that whatsoever. But from a legal standpoint or an appointment standpoint, if you're doing your job and you're doing it well, then how important is it off of your job? Uh, um, um, how important is it that, that whatever you do off your job be so um, important on the job? And, and now, what are your thoughts about that? Well, um, I, I believe that if you sign a contract when you um, are asked to be on the job, you're asked to work somewhere and you sign a contract and the contract states whether you're on site on the job site or in your house or walking on the sidewalk or whatever if they want all of their employees to conduct themselves in a certain manner whether you're on the clock making money or not and you breach that contract then that's your fault but then it also leads to well if you didn't read your contract thoroughly then that's your fault as well because why would you sign something that you don't know that I so don't you bring up a good point Chanel and that is the difference between an average Walmart employee and the employees that we're speaking about specifically um, in the professional athletic leagues um, a Walmart employee signs an employment contract um, in theory um, by showing up and turning in their timesheet on a or time card on a bi-weekly basis and they get paid for the work that they do. There isn't a morality clause in that arrangement. However, most of the professional organizations require of their employees a certain standard because image is also part of their bread and butter. So you have organizations who are paid millions and billions of dollars by advertisers who have to maintain a specific image in order to keep their customers happy. So whether or not you fall on the pro side or the con side of domestic violence is irrelevant. And it doesn't matter whether or not that violence was enacted at your place of business or in your home. If you've signed a contract that says that you will behave at up to a certain standard or not involve yourself in certain things and you breach that contract then you should lose your job now you mentioned something and i i'm very glad that you did and that's um hope solo now hope solo uh i'm saying that most of this misbehavior that we've been hearing about comes from the nfl it seems like it's a trend. One person does it, they go, "Ooh, well, look after him. I'm gonna do that too." And then one of the other, of the other, of the other, you're getting all this from the NFL. But Hope Solo, she's a soccer player, correct? She is. And she's an Olympic soccer player, and she still is playing. And they have not suspended her. That's right. And they have not really uh, chastised her. Absolutely. And so the question is: Is this, even though it's it's a different uh, uh, um, organization? One has to question why Hope Solo isn't getting a lot of negative press that the others are. And I come up with maybe three different reasons. And I'm just telling what came into my head. Okay. One is that she, she's a woman. Right. And just like when um, uh, Solange attacked Jay-Z in the elevator, she didn't get a lot of, um, not, not a lot of ne ne negative press because it's Solange and she's attacking Jay-Z and it's all about, you know, it's defining Jay-Z's fault. Right? Well, well, so, so, hope so, he's a woman. Uh, number two is I thought that, well, well, hope so isn't African American. That could be, that could be something to that. I'm not bringing up race card, or maybe I am. I'm just saying that, I'm just pointing out to you what could be. Mm -hmm. And then number three, because the Olympic is worldwide, there is a different thought pattern in terms of domestic abuse and violence across the world that's not necessarily so in the United States. All right. That's, I'm glad you said that because in, I was just speaking with someone uh, the other day and uh, they're with a spouse and they came from Nigeria and the husband beats on her often and beats on the kids often and she's like well I can't leave and he threatens to send her back and we're like you're in you're in America you can have him put in jail and 
all these other consequences and she's looking at us like we're speaking another language and and I'm glad that you brought it up because everyone I mean that's accepted elsewhere well not everywhere but you know, right, right. Well, one of the things I think that um, that this brought up for me um, when you were making your list, Aaron, is the gender issues. And in the United States, we've had a long-standing problem with gender equity issues in employment. Yeah. And in this case, it may seem like it's going against the grain of that argument to say that Hope Solo is receiving a different sort of treatment. Um, based on her situation, but if we think about how uh, these things work, let's say for instance They didn't want to make a big deal about it because it is Hope Solo because they were trying to avoid a gender equity argument So if they had enacted some other sort of repercussions on her like removing her from being able to play There may have been a group of women who got together and said well She's being discriminated against because she's a woman and I don't know that that would happen. All I know is I'm drawing a very hard and fast line on the fact that if Hope Solo, in her, in her contract with soccer and with the International Soccer Organization and, and the United States soccer team, if in her contract she has agreed to adhere to a certain set of standards in terms of her behavior and she breached those standards, then she too should be removed from her position. And I want to make sure that, that we're clear because a lot of times, you know, when we talk about domestic violence and women, um, you know, we always think about this big, huge man and this little tiny woman. Hope Solo is a large woman. <laughs> so let's not, let's not be mistaken. She's 6'1", easily. Okay. Okay. And she's not, she's not tiny. She's not thin. She's not a petite woman. That, that job is a very hard job to do as a goalkeeper. So you're, you're not talking about someone who is this shy and retiring person. She's got to be aggressive for her work. She has to be willing to put her body on the line for her work. So if in fact we see this um, continuing trend in sports particularly where people are continuously asked to call upon their aggressive side and then they have a difficult time flipping that switch when they're in their personal lives, the question then is does an employer bear some responsibility toward mitigating that behavior. Interesting. That's almost like um, uh, that's a argument that is spoken about uh, with returning parents all the time. Absolutely. I mean, as a vet, that's another conversation, but as a vet, you're trained for violence. And then when you come right. home, somebody yeah, mess somebody mess with you. If you're trained for violence, <laughs> chances are you're going to use it. Right. There's no light right. switch that, exactly. that gets flipped on and off. So, but so Chanel had a comment, I think. You? Um, well, you were talking about the um, gender differences and just the, well, the publicity. And I had to think, too, well, um, the people that are higher up in the industry making more money than others, um, I'm sure that they have some lawyers on standby just in case, or they have enough to pay for a lawyer that is just like, oh no, mm -mm, we're gonna hit this one right out of the park. You're not gonna hit, be hit with any misdemeanors, no, just nothing. And I think that has a big play of uh, money because uh, if that were me and Aaron, uh, then I mean, I, who would be able to afford a, a huge, big time, multimillionaire lawyer and not receive any charges. Well, absolutely. There's some manipulation that is going on, and I think that, that that's who is unfolding. Um, I, I, I want to be clear about the, the fact that whether or not someone is charged with a crime against someone else, to me, is not really the point here. Right. We're talking specifically about a person's relationship with their employer and whether they be a person who works at Walmart, by your example, um, Aaron, or, or works for the NFL or, or any other professional sports organization, if you are given a, an employment contract and you sign that employment contract, it is necessary that you meet the terms of that contract or renegotiate. Yep, yep, yep. Okay? It's true. So, Hello. you're listening to All Things Employment from OneTalkNetwork.com and we have just a few minutes left in our show to give you a, a wrap up, a forecast to what's coming next and our top five. So Aaron, 
I'm excited about the top five, as I am always. See, and what I love about Robin is that she doesn't do the top six. She has the top five. So you know it's a point. And you have to know when enough is enough. <laughs> yeah, why, why would she, I mean, if someone said top six, I mean, that's just... Like, uh, what? What are you talking about? That's overkill. Six yeah. is overkill. You see? And so here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the Robin Top Fun! Thank you, Aaron, for that awkward introduction to the top five. I thank you very much um, because, um, interestingly enough, and it's probably not something that people will be able to get, we don't do as much preparation for this whole endeavor as as other folks. So I didn't talk to Aaron about his tutorial in regards to what the content of my top five was. But the, the content of my top five today is ways to check your resume. I knew that. Well, that's because I told you five minutes ago. <laughs> so, number one, the first way that you should check your resume is spell check. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, those of us in the know always know that the red squiggly line is not our friend on the resume. However, there are some people who see the red squiggly line go, eh, and it's in anyway. I thought it would just, you know, have colorized my work. Absolutely. It is not a decorative tool oh, on a Word it. document. Got it. That means, stop, wait, check me. And in many cases, we have the luxury of just right-clicking the mouse, and we'll get some suggestions mm -hmm. about what Microsoft Word feels like we should be putting in that spot. But regardless, if you see a red squiggly line on your document, you should always check it. Additionally, just because we want to be thorough, you should go to the spell check feature and spell check just to make sure that it didn't miss anything too. Yes. The next way to check your resume, number two, is a grammar check. Hmm. Oftentimes, as we're doing revisions on our resume, we could change the tense of a verb in a sentence or the number in a adjective or the number in a noun, and then that puts our subject verb agreement out of whack. Most of the time, that's checked out by a green squiggly line in our um, programs. However, reading through is going to give you the best knowledge about whether or not you've got grammar goodness See, going now, on. There's a problem there though because, because most resumes are now written in full sentence formats. And so fragments are okay. But fragments are fine. But when you are thinking about your number and subject agreement in terms of verbs, mm -hmm. it, it still needs to be correct. What I'm saying, though, is that that green squiggly line comes up a lot because, because it doesn't know that you're doing a resume right. and, and that you're purposely not using sentence format. And the beauty of that is on the, on the right click, it will tell you sentence fragment. Ignore. <laughs> and then you can do so. Very nice. The next kind of way that you can check your resume is the eyeball test. If you look at your resume and it looks boring to you, then it's probably going to look boring to the person who's reviewing it. That doesn't mean you add all kinds of bells and whistles. That has no relevance on whether or not you should add a scratch and sniff sticker. It simply means that there are multiple ways to add eye appeal to your resume and you should take into consideration some of those options. But my eyeball test, I wear rose colored glasses so anything I I see looks fantastic. Well that's because you look lovely, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Aaron, I appreciate the segue, I'll pay you later. Okay. That is number four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have your resume checked by an employment professional. Oh. That could be a job counselor, that could be a school counselor, that could be a teacher, that could be a friend who's in a hiring position at another employer. You should have a, another set of eyes. How about my friend Bubba? Um, <laughs> is Bubba the human resources manager at HP? No. Then probably not. 
Someone who is your peer does not qualify as an employment professional. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a mentor who meets that standard, you should go make one. Those people are available for you at the Sacramento Works Career Centers. They're available at local schools. They're available everywhere you are. So make sure you get your resume checked out by an employment professional, a professional employment counselor. And the final way that you can check your resume to make sure it's ready to go is check your keywords against the job listing for parity. Keywords. Keywords. Oftentimes, we create a resume, wipe our brow, and say, whew, I'm so glad that's done. Except, Erin, you and I know, and everyone who's in the biz know that a resume is a living document, which means that it is supposed to be changed every time let me say that again every time you apply for a job but that's a lot of work it's a lot of work but if you want a job then you will do the work Mm. anything worth having is worth working for so successful people do what others can't or won't do others Successful people do what others can't or won't do, and that is change your resume every single time you're applying for a job. So, reviewing the top five ways to check your resume. Number one, spell check. Number two, grammar check. Number three, the eyeball test. Number four, check with an employment professional, job counselor, or job coach. And number five, check your keywords against the job listing to make sure you have parity. That was a wonderful top five. Thank you very much, Aaron. Wow. I'm, I'm just curious, if there was a top six, no, we'll save that for another day. <laughs> save that for That's another not, day. Our viewers won't like that. Oh, okay. She says that no one can, can hear her because she wasn't saying it in the mic. I said oh. our viewers <laughs> oh, my will ears. not like that. And oh, now that Aaron is deaf, you're listening to All Things Employment on OneTalkNetwork.com. And we've got a fantastic show lined up for you next week, huh, Aaron? We do have a fantastic show with fantastic people. One, one, one of the things I'm very, very excited about is Shriners Hospital will be here next week. For those of you who know Shriners, you know the great work that they do in terms of helping children with burns and other maladies and calamities uh, uh, come through. And Chanel, uh, you did a tour uh, with uh, Shriners Hospital this year, did you not? Yes, I did. It was great. So oh, my goodness. we'll talk about that um, when they come here, right? Yes. That, that, that's good. That's good. And um, she's going to talk about, um, well, she, he, uh, 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 there's two of them, they're going to be talking about uh, not only what they do, but also uh, qualifications in terms of jobs and uh, volunteering. Because uh, they they do use a lot of volunteers. Uh, the other person that we have is um, we we were going to have uh, uh, Professor Edge here today. They did not come, but they will be here next week. So we're going to have um, a lady by the name of Jessica. Uh, coming in from Professional Edge. And um, I believe that's all we have, but that's good. That's still a very, very good show. Jam packed. All right. So, uh, let's see. Final thoughts. We we have time for final thoughts. We have time for, we have time for final thoughts. We do. Wow. Well, okay. Well, my final thoughts uh, today is I really appreciate Larry Carr for coming out and staying with us for two quadrants. I'm very excited about what he's got going on in the Floor and Road Partnership. Um, I am also excited about encouraging our listeners to go out and vote and be a part of the process. You cannot complain if you did not participate. Chanel? All right, so I I really like the the top. What is your final thought? Oh, okay. So my final thought is, the top five. Uh, I really enjoyed hearing because someone, everyone needs a refresher when they're applying for jobs. Um, the eyeball test, grammar check, spell check, checking your resume. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah, checking the keywords for the job application. I think that's very important. And updating the resume every time that you apply for a new job. Oh my gosh. Gosh, Robin, you're, you're requiring so much of me. 
and everyone else. I just want you all to be employed, that's all. <sighs> well, we appreciate it. We do appreciate it. At least you're not nagging us. Nope. You know, that, that would be off. I'd be like, look, you, you know, I'm changing my number. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron, what are your final thoughts? My final thought is simply this. Everything that that you do counts. Be it in the workplace or off the workplace, it counts. And don't think that you can be two people, a monster at home and a saint on the the, the, the job. Um, things are going to things are going to get out. Should you lose your job or should you be penalized? Well, guess what? We are part of this thing called the human race. And so therefore, it matters. So no, because it matters, yes, we need you to be and act like the man or the woman that you were made to be, or the man or the woman that you know you should be. On the workplace, off the workplace, everything counts. And that's my final thought. And, and also, to add to that, when you're living two lives, people can sense it. Um, that's normally the person that you're like, hey, that person's kind of different. What do you think? And the whole um, everyone that works at your job would be like, yeah, stay away from them. Something's wrong. And then they end up on the news. So, so definitely that was her final thought. I believe that that actually was Janelle's final thought. I think it was. <laughs> You've been listening to All Things Employment on OneTalkNetwork.com. Please visit us at our Facebook page at All Things Employment and check us out on YouTube at All Things Employment No Spaces. We still would love to hear from you, so if you've got some comments or some questions, you can reach us at allthingsemployment at gmail.com or 916-629-4229. And if they have a smartphone? You can go to All Things Employment on Facebook. Well, or, or you can download the Radio Loyalty app. Ah, <laughs> yes. There's a, also an app. The Radio Loyalty app is the best way to listen to us. Right. And if that's you, available if, if you have a smartphone. If Absolutely. you have a smartphone. Okay, there we go. So, I, well, I am Aaron Boyce. And I'm Robin Rose Hamer. Oh, and I'm Sean Sapper. Absolutely. And we'll see you next week. And peace. <laughs>